Hi everyone, here's the latest from Iceland, from the Reykjanes Peninsula. For the ones that are not into this topic, we are all waiting for the next event that could be a magma intrusion that forms an underground dike underneath the surface, but the magma cannot reach the surface yet. That's an intrusion, but also an eruption. And we have seen three eruption just recently in that area. And on November 10th, we've had that magma dike that has has formed a 15 kilometer long magma dike and along that dike we're expecting the next eruption and just right now it has been rumbling with an earthquake that was larger than everything else we have just recently measured and it was along the magma dike and what does that mean how close was it to Grindavik and then we know more we learn more about that intrusion that just happened on March 2nd how shallow was it how deep was it and how how long was it? All of that in this video, guys, so stay tuned. So let's start with the earthquake. It is rumbling. So it was me measured southeast of Thorbjörn, Mount Thorbjörn. So you have to, when you look at the map, there's the Swartzengi area with the Blue Lagoon and the power plant. There's the Northern Lights in in this area. That's where we have the magma chamber that is underneath. And that magma chamber is filling up. And it has been rumbling if you look at Mount Thorbjörn and you go south of Mount Thorbjörn and there is Grindavik. You see it on the map. And southeast of Mount Thorbjörn and it has been rumbling along the magma tunnel that has formed on November 10th. The earthquake happened at around half past nine in the evening Icelandic time. So since then there was nothing else. So there wasn't another earthquake swarm or anything. So right now everything is calm and quiet. Is this the calm before the storm guys? It is at a standstill. So what has the Icelandic meteorological office said they're the ones that are measuring this and that are observing this and they're giving us the most up-to-date accurate information about what is going on so does that mean we will see another event close to Grindavik or maybe inside of Grindavik because this is not in the Hagafell area in the Sudnuka crater serious area where we have seen the eruptions in December and in February. This is too close for comfort to Grindavik, in my opinion. So does that mean we have magma flowing underground into that area? We will look into this when we hear more about the last intrusion and where it was flowing. So the Icelandic Meteorological Office is saying that this earthquake, 2.8 in magnitude, is larger than those that have been recorded in this area recently. And they confirm the origin was at the magma tunnel. And if you have watched my last videos, remember the Icelandic Meteorological Office has said that because of the weather, like rain, storm, um, their seismic instruments might be affected in a way that they cannot measure the smaller swarms of earthquakes. So this could mean that something could move more undetected. If the magma is on the move, it usually is accompanied by earthquakes because the earth is rumbling if that thing is moving underground, like a big worm of magma flowing underground that rumbles, right? But since we have seen some intrusions and eruptions where magma has formed these tunnels, it might flow a little bit easier because the railing system is already there. It doesn't need to dig out new tunnels. But 2.8, that's quite significant. So what is going on? We have no further information yet. Is there magma that is trying to dig further? We don't know. But what we know is something that happened on March 2nd and 
the scientists were a little bit surprised that it stopped at that magma run that was starting underneath the Swartzengi area where the magma chamber is, that it did stop in the Hagafell area. So they were thinking maybe there was a clog or something. Remember, if you have a clogged pipe, right? So that magma tunnel was about three kilometers long. So it was flowing from underneath Swartzengi into that Hagafell area and the magma is about 1.2 kilometers away from the surface and that's at the areas where they think it's the shallowest so 1.2 kilometers that's I believe a little less than a mile and it reaches a depth of about 3.9 kilometers so that's quite significant right um also, the model calculations that the Icelandic Meteorological Office has conducted, it shows that that tunnel extends from Stora Skogfell to Hagafell, and that's where it stopped. And they can say that's calculation, so that's not 100%, that's an estimate, that when the intrusion started from the magma chamber, that about 1.3 million cubic meters were flowing through that tunnel into the Sutnuka Crater series um, on the March 2nd magma run. It's not a large amount. It's probably like two and a half days worth of filling that is happening in that magma chamber. So by now, they said yesterday, they think in that magma chamber, we have reached about 10 million cubic meters against that since they said that yesterday, maybe we're at 10.5 million cubic meters right now. And always when in the past, when the eruptions or the intrusions happened, it has shown that when that magma chamber had an amount of magma of about between 8 million cubic meters to 13 million cubic meters, we see something happening. We see an event, we see pressure build up. And at the last events, it was even less than we have now. So what does that mean? Does that mean we will see something stronger? Well, we don't know. Um, one scientist that I like to quote quite often because I really think that he's, with his opinion, closest to what's really happening, Thorwald or Thorwald, and he said two days ago he thinks it's happening today and it hasn't happened. So that gives you an indication. It could happen any minute. So I think what we have to watch for now, with that earthquake, will something else start? So it is quiet, but then these earthquake swarms, when the magma's really then on the move, when the event happens, we see a cluster of earthquakes. It's on these earthquakes maps. It's like dot, 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 dot. And then it forms, you don't even see the single dots of the earthquakes anymore. It's like a big cluster. These dots form a big dots. But as I said, it could be that it's not that big because there's already roads paved, so to speak, for the magma to flow. But you know, they were hoping or they were predicting that the next event, should there be an eruption, would be in the Sudnuka Crater series again, which is quite a good area. The only problem that it has caused in the last eruption that we have seen there is that the magma reached the surface and then the lava flow was extremely fast. So it did reach... Swartzengi, it did close up the Grindavikovigu road, the main access road to the Blue Lagoon and the power plant, and then if you go further south to Grindavik. So it was flowing quite fast. It was damaging critical infrastructure pipes, was flowing over them, pipes that went from the Swartzengi power plant to serve communities with hot water, meaning heat, to their homes. So homes were for, for five days without heat. So we will have to see. So this amount that has flown out just last week, it's insignificant. So it doesn't really mean that this has given the system some relief. No, the magma chamber started filling right away and we're waiting for something bigger, maybe. So um, the magma always looks for the easiest way to the surface. And it is difficult to say. What has prevented it on March 2nd from 
causing an eruption. So it could be some obstruction in the flow of magma, as I said, some clogging. It could be that there was not enough volume pressure in the magma chamber so that it could push through the surface and open a fissure or a combination of all of these factors. But we know now there is definitely more pressure in the magma chamber right now. So the land rise has continued and um, the meteorological office has released a map you can see in purple that's where the lava flows have happened so you see the darker purple area that's the older lava flow from december and then you see the purple area around grindavik there's two fissures that have opened the northern fissure that was breaking the um, defense wall a little bit and then we had another southern fissure opening basically inside Grindavik that did destroy the three homes but then you see that lighter purple um, area that's above on top of the darker purple area that, that was the latest lava flow that we have seen in the last eruption in February. So that did spread out. This made quite a way, roughly like 4.5 kilometers towards the Swartzengi area. And there you see the red line with the dots. That's where it did flow, that little area there, it did flow over the heat pipes. And you see that it did cross the road. And you see also in Grindavik, the fissure that um, has opened there with the lava flow has also crossed Grindavik Vigua. And there you see basically in between these two lava flows that cross Grindavik Vigua, you see that mountain, Mount Thorbjörn. So the recent earthquakes is earthquake was southeast of Mount Thorbjörn. And you see that is Grindavik. That is at the doorsteps of Grindavik. So they have been working to finish these defense walls around Grindavik. So should there be an eruption in the lava flow so that they could divert it around Grindavik? But there's always the question, will it work? So there you see the red line, the thicker red dotted line. This is where they thought or maybe still think that we will see the next eruption along that magma dike. But that magma dike that formed on November 10th is 15 kilometers long. And so that line, I'll show you now, if you in lengthen that line, there you see the November 10th magma dike. And then you see that earthquake. So that is close to Grindavik. Does that mean anything? Does that mean the magma is coming there? Maybe it is already flowing there. We don't know. We have to wait if they're making a new um, measurement, what they think, what's going on in the magma chamber. But definitely 2.9, that is not something minor. Something's going on there. So that is why that why they're saying that the magma flow that happened on March 2nd, just basically a week ago, has behaved different than previous magma flows that happened um, last year. So they need to study and they want to study further um, what is going on so that they have a better understanding of the nature of that volcanic magmatic activity that is happening in this area between like Rindavik and Swartzengi, even towards Fagradalsfjall. They need to learn more about what is the nature of these magma flows in the region so that they can give more precise estimates of, of what is happening in the future because this could last for years, decades, even centuries. So they need to figure out what does that mean for Grindavik, for the critical infrastructure in the area. So during the 10-year period where we have seen the Krafla eruptions, that was a 10-year period from 1975 to 1984, they did see 20 magma flows and nine of those flows did end up in an eruption. So I think what we're seeing here now, I think there will definitely be more eruptions. So nine eruptions in 10 years, we've already seen three 
in basically a six month time frame, less than six months. So five incidents, right? Within less than six months. If you compare that to 10 incident, uh, 20 incidents within 10 years at Krafla, I think this will, this activity here will definitely top it. So they can't say right now that this, what we're seeing here in the Swartzengi area, in the Grindavik area, is something similar to Krafla. They, they can't say, it looks like it is, but it looks like it is more active, in my opinion, when I look at it, how it's behaving now. It's Right now, we're seeing one event per month, at least, right? So if something happens now, within the next few hours or days, that will be two events in one month. So March 2nd, it was the magma flow, and then something else we will have to see is it an eruption or is it an intrusion so very interesting guys but also a little bit concerning when i look at where that earthquake is so i will keep you updated about this guys and wait for my next video because there's something going on in campi flegri it's like everything's rumbling at the same time so i'll keep you updated about that as well so stay tuned if you're new here i would be so happy if i could earn your subscription and thank you so much guys it would be great if you could give this video a like and i hope to see you very very soon on my channel again so that you can be on the pulse with silky i'm out of here bye